Hi, this is Simon and welcome to another marvellous video. With your command, let's explore the most iconic and well-known sci-fi series villains ever. They initially appeared in the 1978 TV series Battlestar Galactica. This video will explore their origin, purpose and much more. The show was an enormous success. Duh. It was followed in 1980 by a sequel series named Galactica. The Battlestar Galactica franchise quickly grew to such massive popularity that everyone wanted a piece of this cake. ka -ching! Soon, a series of book adaptations, original novels, and numerous other merchandise emerged. It didn't stop there. In 2003, a revamped version was released as a miniseries. The legacy of this legendary franchise may be observed as late as 2010, when its prequel, Caprica, debuted. Talking about the Cylons are a strange and mysterious race that plays a vital role in the plot of the series because the human characters both fear and revere them. The Cylons are a powerful foe that colonial humans must battle in their quest for survival, thanks to their sophisticated technology and limitless resources. So put on your geek glasses and find out who the Cylons are and what is their true purpose for waging a millennium war on humanity and a lot more. Before we go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks, and let's begin. Disengage Pegasus and proceed to the Moray. Who are the Cylons? A brief history of this. So, who exactly are Cylons? And what makes them so, uh, Cylonic? Greystone Industries was successful in 1942 in developing the cybernetic lifeform node, Cylon for short, which enabled the development of improving military robots with human level intelligence, but near perfect weapon accuracy. Now, that sounds like the perfect ingredient for a killer robot. It is noteworthy that Cylon is also the name of a reptile race that created robotic Cylons in the original series. However, the reptilian Cylons went extinct as their robotic creations killed them. The personalities and origin of these mechanical beings differ drastically between the two Battlestar Galactica series. The original series concentrates on the great war between humans and the Cylons, while the prequel series, Caprica, explores their origins. It also showcases their superior technology, distinguishes the Cylons, and their ability to imitate human looks and behavior. They are likewise profoundly religious with a single all-powerful god. This conviction is central to their purpose for harming humanity. The Cylons regard themselves as God's instruments, appointed to punish those who do not believe in a single god. Their collective consciousness enables them to interact and share their experiences, which improves their general intellect and capacity to coordinate their actions. A significant amount of credit for their dominance goes to the resurrection ship. The ship allows them to down load their consciousness into a new body if their current one is destroyed, granting them immortality. And we're talking 1978. How flipping cool is that? The Cylons were portrayed in the original series as robotic beings with a limited range of emotions and intentions. On the other hand, the reimagined series was given a more sophisticated and elaborate representation. They're portrayed as having a broad spectrum of personalities and motivations, with some Cylons even sympathizing with humans and opposing war. This complication comes from the fact that the Cylon in the rebooted series were supposed to be more human-like in appearance and behavior. The Cylons are portrayed as a reflection of humans, complete with their emotions, goals, and sense of morality. As the series develops, the borders between humans and Cylon becomes more blurred, with some human characters learning that they are Cylons themselves. Furthermore, they were assigned numbers to various models ranging from 1 to 8, each bearing distinct physical and personality characteristics. We'll talk about that in a bit. The First Cylon Insurrection and its Aftermath the First Cylon War was a bloody military battle lasting over a decade. The 12 colonies of Kobol were separate states before the war. They had multilateral relations and even fought and overthrew one another. Before the war, it was every colony for itself. You know, the usual human thingy. There were international treaties, but humanity was far from a single, undivided species. This was clear when the Cylon's insurrection began, either through
through external factors or a collective decision by the Cylons, they staged a brutal rebellion to free themselves from labor, which caught their human masters entirely off guard. While the better prepared forces were initially able to stop the rebels, the next 12 years of battle would see both sides create constantly evolving strategies and technologies in a determined quest to win the war for their very survival. It soon became evident that the only way to ensure the survival of one party was mass extinction of the other. Soon the Cylons constructed a cruiser fleet and developed hacking abilities, making more and more primitive human technologies vulnerable. The Cylons attacked all 12 human colonies across space. After almost losing the war, all 12 worlds agreed to join forces and form the United Colonies of Kobol. Uh, you know, the usual human thingy. The rebellion revealed the Cylon's real nature. They were not simply machines, but sentient beings with ambitions and aspirations. Like always, humans learned the hard way that their creations had become equals, and they could no longer consider them simple tools. However, a cover-up armistice was declared out of nowhere, and battles were suspended throughout colonial space. An armistice line was drawn in space, and no party was allowed to breach it. We termed it a cover-up, as the Cylons needed time to refine their technologies, including creating humanoid Cylon bodies after improving resurrection technology. The humanoid Cylons, known as the Final Five, provided them with the necessary technology, and as a result, the Final Five ruled this emerging robotic civilization for the next 40 years, and with that, the bloodiest war in colonial history ended. The aftermath of the First Cylon War had various consequences, including the loss of an entire generation in combat, the utter destruction of the economy, military resources that are now useless, and a significant number of unemployed veterans. The war fundamentally altered politics and colonial society. In this system, the people who once fought and competed with one another, staying united as a species, and the colonial armed forces continues to grow and maintain a watch over humanity. The devastating genocidal campaign of the Cylons, the Great War on Humanity. I almost feel like a history teacher now who wants some homework. I'm just kidding, fellas. Let's see what happens when machines act like humans. The peace and calm that followed was an unanticipated effect of the war. The Cylons faction never visited, contacted the armistice station for diplomacy, or even came close to the boundary line. Humans wondered if the Cylons were still alive after 40 years. The Cylons launched their attack by unexpectedly appearing at the armistice station and destroying it. This raised an important question, whether it was worth maintaining such a massive military force and a strong union of the colonies in the absence of an enemy. The question would be answered on the day the Cylons launched the Great War on all human settlements and murdered billions within hours. A terrifying feature of the massacre was the utilization of the Resurrection Ship, a gigantic spacecraft that contained the consciousness of Cylon leaders, allowing them to transfer their minds into new bodies after death. This meant that even if humans could kill a Cylon, they could just download it into a new body and resume the fight. However, the Cylons attempted to coexist with humans again in the newly constructed New Caprica, but this failed due to the extremist models of the Cylons who opposed the idea of coexistence. It does sound like world history, doesn't it? The events of the Civil War and the Cylons' search for Earth on the quest to become as close to humans as possible, the Cylon race entered a civil war war as the Cylons constructed humanoid models of themselves with personalities and emotions that frequently opposed those of their mechanical counterparts. Model number one, commonly known as Cavill, weighed an uprising against the final five who had produced the humanoid Cylons in the first place. Cavill's concerns rose as he saw the final five hindering the Cylons' development towards their full potential. This battle between the two Cylon factions quickly escalated into a long and bitter civil war. Due to the dictatorial activities of the number ones, the production of all number three models was halted in the aftermath of the insurrection. The number twos, sixes and eights responded by launching a massive rebellion against their fellow Cylon. The rebel Cylons and humans formed a partnership and together they could destroy the resurrection hub, robbing the Cylons of their immortality. Boom. How are you going to respawn now, tin head? This becomes a turning point at the last milestone of the Cylon civil war. The rebel robots and the colonial humans decide to shoot through space in search of the mythical planet, which was believed to be the original home of the humans. After warping through light years of space, this new alliance finally finds Earth. Their joy doesn't last very long, as as soon as they realize the Earth underwent a catastrophic nuclear war, making it a radioactive wasteland, 
the nuclear war led to the extinction of its entire human and Cylon population. Even after a disheartening discovery, the colonial humans and the rebel Cylons maintained their alliance. However, the fragility of this partnership is showcased on numerous occasions. What are humanoid Cylons? Exploring every significant humanoid Cylon model. Every Battlestar Galactica fanatic knows what the Cylons are and what they represent. The humanoids are technologically advanced robots that look like humans and can perceive all human emotions. This extraordinary ability to mimic human-like behavior makes it highly challenging for humans to identify them. So here we're going to explore the true nature of the humanoid models and look at their narrative from a different lens. Technology goes like this. Humans created the original Cylon race to aid their workforce. Once the original Cylons evolved just enough to make their copies, they created these humanoid versions of themselves for the sole purpose of infiltrating the human colonies. Let's talk about some major humanoid models, each with its own abilities and characteristics. The number six model is the first model in the series. Six is our favorite, I mean my favorite. She is a sexy, graceful Cylon infiltrator. She was the first to be portrayed as an example of a new generation of Cylons capable of assuming human appearance and emotions. Her body is engineered to imitate the human body at the cellular level, making her nearly undetectable to testing methods. The number sixes and number eight models were the first visible Cylon on show. They were the first to be revealed. Six had lured Gaius Baltar into granting her access to the defense mainframe, which resulted in the destruction of the 12 colonies. Moving on to number three, the number three type is one of the fatal robots, as she is a deeply religious Cylon, who believes that by annihilating the human race, the Cylons are doing God's work. Her obsession with the Cylon gods and her desire to show everything there is about the final five led to number one, boxing her. One of the most intriguing Cylons is number four, infiltrating the Battlestar Galactica ship as a medical expert. They are the most machine-like Cylons, with a calm and to-the-point personality. His logical reasoning and disregard for emotion make him a favorite of number one. This brings us to number five. They supported the ones and fours during the Cylon divide. They were known for being emotionally unstable and manipulative, often switching between friendly and violent behavior. They looked like regular people, making it easy for them to blend in with the fleet. Number sevens, known as Daniel, they were of artistic and sensitive nature. They were thought to be named after Dr. Daniel Greystone, the creator of the first Cylon, as shown in the Caprica prequel series. Another significant Cylon model is number eight, which which has a dual identity, with one functioning as a sleeper agent within the colonial human populace and the other operating as a raptor pilot. The number eight type is known for its empathy and compassion, making it a vital tool in the Cylon's efforts to comprehend and connect with humans. She was the first one to demonstrate that humans and Cylons can breed together when she was pregnant with Hilo's child. Number two, in Battlestar Galactica, they were one of the most devout Cylon models, believing in spirituality rather than literal meaning of scripture. The two sided with humanity, believing that their ultimate spiritual mission was to find a way for the two peoples to coexist peacefully. Number one, properly known as Cavill, one was the first model created by the Final Five. He holds extreme significance as he assisted the Final Five with the creation of the other seven models. He is the most unreligious of the monotheistic Cylon religion. He betrayed the most hostile and ruthless humanoid of all. The Centurions, the more robotic version of Cylons. In the broad genre of science fiction, only a handful of inventions have caught the imagination, quite like the Centurions of the Cylon race. The Centurions were developed solely for military purposes. These tall, lethal robots have become a symbol of threats that follow when technology is pushed too far. Their glowing red eyes, shiny metal bodies, and their fatal desire to obey commands showed a catastrophic future for colonial humans. The reimagined series didn't totally get rid of the robotic Cylons with the inception of humanoids. Centurions are humanoids in structure with long arms and helmet-like heads. They are restricted from climbing the intellectual ladder too high. This means the Centurions cannot act out of will but instead follow orders. These models possess super strength which makes them a pro in combat. They also are equipped with energy blasters, blades and explosives making them nearly invincible in long-range or close combat. 
every other major Cylon variant in Battlestar Galactica. Before the Great War, Cylons were primarily used for civic and household assistance. Their design was humanoid even back then, allowing them to do daily activities like domestic servants and construction laborers. The hybrid Cylon form is one of the many stages in the Cylon's developmental journey. It all began with research that required live specimens and ended with an organic bodied Cylon. These hybrids could execute a wide range of tasks from decoding computer data to operating a base star. Next on our list is the IL series. They look and act much like a regular civilian Cylon. They have a distinct design and a human-like metallic face, two eyes unlike the Centurion models, and a transparent head. IL series Cylons take up commanding positions in the armed forces and the administration. Another attractive model is the Imperious Leader. As the name suggests, they are the leaders in the Cylon Alliance and are said to be the most cutting-edge models. They resemble reptilian Cylons and have a third brain solely to anticipate human actions. The Cylons' growth encompassed machinery and logistics equipment in addition to robots. The newly developed Raiders and Base Stars were partially organic in design. They were built of biomaterial that could grow and repair itself like a bone. Pretty fancy, isn't it? Wait, there's more. The organic elements of this machinery allowed it a limited amount of consciousness that could be used by the Cylons to operate and maneuver them. What makes the Cylons so unique and powerful? What makes the Cylons different is their quality to evolve and adapt, grow and learn above their original command. They possess a consciousness allowing them to reason and think like emotional beings. The Cylon technology lets them communicate with one another via a neural network, resulting in collective intelligence. This network allows them to communicate instantaneously and share information across great distances, making them a highly coordinated force. They can also repair themselves and other machines, making them a very resilient enemy. Perhaps the terrifying factor that makes the Cylons so powerful is their belief system that the way of existence is superior to that of humans and that they can go to any lengths to achieve their desired world order. Conclusion: The Cylons are a sophisticated and intelligent creation, and their journey from being the creation to becoming the creator was full of challenges for the Cylons and the Colonials. Their unwavering belief in Cylons' dominance makes them a unique race, unlike humankind. These special characters from the Battlestar Galactica series are liked and disliked by millions over decades. The Cylons are not only a source of entertainment, but also something to ponder upon, as we've already arrived in the age of artificial intelligence. The Cylon race raises mind-numbing concerns about the human-machine connection, the ethics of artificial intelligence, and the potential consequences of unchecked technological progress. It is noteworthy that the Cylons are driven not only by a desire for power, but also by a profound belief in their own superiority and a desire to wipe out humans in order to create a new, perfect world. While the Cylons are fictional characters, they provide valuable lessons about the dangers of technology blind faith and the importance of understanding those who are different from us. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.